Hi everyone, Linda from Let's Talk Prepping, and I wanted to look at biometrics tonight. Uh, this is from CNBC, so a mainstream source. MasterCard launches tech that lets you pay with your face or hand in stores. So MasterCard on Tuesday launched a program that allows retailers to offer biometric payment methods like facial recognition and fingerprint scanning. Users can authenticate a payment by showing their face or the palm of their hand instead of swiping the card. The technology could one day help with the development of payment infrastructure for the metaverse and executive set. So as you go down here, you'll see that they've gone live in five. You can see they've gone live in five St. Marshy grocery stores in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and it plans to roll it out globally later this year. It says the customers love it. I'm not sure that's true. Uh, about 1.4 billion people are expected to use facial recognition technology to authenticate a payment by 2025, more than doubling from the 671 million in 2020. And you sign up and they take your picture of your face or scan your fingerprint. They say it's encrypted so it'll ensure privacy, but you know all the cyber attackers know how to get around all of this. And what they're doing is they're preparing for the metaverse, which I'm not sure why. We are working toward, what we are working towards is the metaverse. The metaverse refers to a hypothetical virtual world where users can work, trade, or socialize. And then down here, this is interesting. Another feature the firm is experimenting with allows users to select and buy items at a virtual store using nothing but their eyes. So that means you just look at something and you blink the right way and you've bought it. You've bought a thousand of them, whatever they happen to be. So if you go to the MasterCard, well, here's biometricupdate.com. And it says MasterCard launches retail biometrics program with Brazil Pilot. And they talk about it here. And it's something they call PayFace. So PayFace uses technologies from IDR, ID, R&D for passive liveness detection. And then if you go over to MasterCard and they tell you all about it, driving cardhold security and convenience, a next generation solution. And they talk about the biometric card combines chip technology with fingerprints. It tells you here how it works and how they capture it, and you don't need to sign it or use a pin anymore. So they go all through this. You can go to the Frequently Asked Questions. And I went to the Frequently Asked Questions, and it tells you a little bit about it. And down here it says, is the fingerprint stored on the card? No. There's a numerical representation, zeros and ones of the fingerprint. Well, you know, those can be counterfeited. It's stored on a chip within the card, so I imagine it's pretty easy if you know a little bit about computers to counterfeit something like that. And here, MasterCard launches biometric checkout program. And this is from LifeSite. LifeSiteNews.com, and they say future pilots are being planned to roll out in the Middle East and Asia. So they've already got it in Brazil, Middle East and Asia coming our way, I'm sure. And as far back as 2009, India began a project to give every citizen a digital ID, including fingerprint or iris scans. And in 2010, MasterCard was already working with the Unique Identification Authority of India to provide biometric authentication of transaction payments. So it's well on its way, people. The Wall Street Journal, hospitals turn to biometrics to identify patients. 
And I thought this was interesting. This is biometrictoday.com. Biometrictoday.com. 25 uses of biometrics in today's society. And they're going to talk about the top uses of biometrics and smartphone security to uh, open your smartphone with uh, your eye or your fingerprint. Border security, that's a laugh. That's not happening here. They say the U.S., but if it's border security, it's only for people coming in legally. It's not for the illegals at the southern border, but it talks about all these countries that have already deployed biometric technologies to tighten the border security, and Russia adopted it to capture fingerprint and face recognition of tourists from visa-free countries. Australian border guards and Irish government have signed on to it. And a national ID, this is a scary one. Growing security concerns around the world constantly create a higher demand for a biometric national identification program. A large number of countries have already adopted this technology, including France, Germany, Colombia, Greece, Iraq, Morocco, Albania, Sri Lanka, Maldives, Ukraine, Malaysia, India, Indonesia, etc. So generally, a biometric national identification card is a portable light document that consists of a name, birth date, address, citizenship, religion, and a unique number and biometric profile. So you can bet that's coming here sometime. Banking. A report says that biometric banking is most popular in the UK. A new law has been approved to obtain fingerprint biometrics in all banks in Mexico. Wells Fargo has been has been trialing eye scanning technology, workforce management for attendance, point of sale, etc. A SIM card. Several countries adopted biometric SIM card registration to registration to prevent identity fraud. The Indian government may deactivate the SIM cards that are not linked to ADHAR, the nation mandatory biometric program. And that's the problem, may deactivate. And you know the government will deactivate whatever they can. Hospitals are using it, airports are using it, law enforcement, private cars. So you get in your car and you won't be able to start it without some biometric identification. And if something goes wrong, which is always possible, you might not be able to start it at all. There you are stuck because it won't recognize you, your laptop, and church. Recently, biometric technology has been adopted in many churches to increase the security and speed of the process. In schools, at the gym, Gyms generally have a members-only rule, so fingerprint technology can play a vital role here. Shopping malls, so to secure prisons, public transports. Fingerprint and face scanning technology are now public demand for every kind of transportation, including planes, buses, railroads, and taxi cabs. So we'll need it for public transport, but not to vote. All blood banks, government welfare. India has built a massive biometric database named ADHAR for 1.3 billion people to enhance the government welfare programs. Pakistan has also done it. Philippines announced a biometric program to reach senior and disabled citizens. Well, many seniors are certainly not going to do biometrics, and either are disabled citizens. They can't get anywhere to do it. The elections. Many nations have already adopted biometric technology for the elections. Refugees registration, sports, driver's license. Six states, including Iowa, Colorado, Idaho, Maryland, Washington, D.C., and Wyoming, will trial digital driver's licenses with fingerprint technology. Oh, in 2018. So it must be going on someplace now. Hotels, public bathrooms. Yes, you heard that right. 
Though it sounds odd, China has actually implemented face recognition devices in public washrooms in order to stop toilet paper stealing. Interesting. So the use of biometrics technology will be increasing in the coming days as people are now more concerned about the security than ever. I think it's going to be worse once you have that they're going to know everything about you, everything you do, where you go, what you buy, and they're going to be able to turn it off in a second. So this is what's going on now. So pay attention to what's going on now because it's going to come and don't be surprised by it, but try to figure out how you can get around it. For example, you might have to buy things in small stores instead of in the big chain stores. We'd have to use cash, if cash is even allowed. Please comment. Let us know what you think about all of this and where our world is headed. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe.